Good day everyone, I am Katerin Tita Numay and today I will be showing to you my return demonstration for the basic life support such as the cardiopulmonary resuscitation and the AED skills or the automated external defibrillator. Immediate CPR can double or triple the chances of survival after cardiac arrest. It helps keep the brain and other vital organs alive during cardiac arrest by pushing oxygen-filled blood throughout the body. So first, let's assess adult patients. The first thing we're going to do when we arrive at the scene is to check for surroundings for any hazards or any dangers to avoid any harm to both the rescuer and the patient. So for inspection, there are no hazards or danger in the surroundings, so we can now proceed to the procedure. So for the assessment and activation, assess the patient if they are responsive or not because a person who is responsive will move, speak, blink, or react in some way when you tap him and ask if he is okay. However, if a person is unresponsive, you observe that he is not breathing and does nothing when you tap him and ask if he is okay. So first procedure is that we will be shouting for help. Sir, sir, are you okay? Sir, sir, are you okay? The patient is unresponsive. Somebody help me, please. Next, we will be checking the pulse and breathing simultaneously for us to determine if there is a pulse present. Okay, so here is the carotid artery. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. Okay, so there is no normal breathing and pulse felt. Next, is activate the emergency response system and send for an AED for us to help the heart re-establish an effective rhythm. You with the blue shirt, please call 911 and send me an AED as soon as possible, please. And now we will be turning the patient into his back and place him on a flat, hard surface. Okay, so now I am checking for any debris. Okay, so there is no debris on the patient. Next is high quality compressions. Here, the hand placement on the lower half of the sternum by putting the heel of your dominant hand in the middle of the chest and then put your non-dominant hand above your dominant hand and elbow slot. And here, 30 compressions in no less than 15 and no more than 18 seconds and compressed at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters and complete recoil after each compression. Starting compressions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. For the adult breaths, you will be giving two breaths with a barrier device. So this is an improvised one. And each breath is given over one second. And now we're going to tilt the head, lift the chin, pinch nose, shot and then blow for one each so here visible chest rise with each breath and we always have to remember to watch for the chest to rise as you give each breath now you'll be resuming compressions in less than 10 seconds resuming compressions one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Still, the patient is unresponsive, so we're going to proceed to the third cycle of compression. Resuming compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
Still, the patient is unresponsive, so we're going to proceed to the fifth cycle of compression. Resuming compressions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. <sighs> Lastly, the AED or the one day cold automated external defibrillator. So, first we need to power on the device or the AED. So, this is a machine that can deliver a shock to allow the heart to work properly. And then, correctly attach the pads after. So, I'm going to attach the first pad on the right side of the patient's chest, just below the collarbone. And the second one will be on the right side of the patient's chest, just below the nipple. So, now we need to clear for analysis because for evaluation of the heart rhythm, we need to stand by and prepare to shock. We need to always remember that we don't need to touch the patient and let the AED analyze. Everyone, move away from the patient. And do not touch the patient, including me. So if the AED says, start CPR now, start compression immediately. Clear to safety, deliver a shock. And here we need to do 30 compressions and 2 breaths simultaneously. So here as you can see that we have safety, deliver a shock, and don't forget to switch roles every after 2 minutes or every after 5 cycles. And always remember to practice good team dynamics with your members here. So now let's proceed in assessing pediatric patients. So when performing CPR on an adult, you likely have to use full lung strength to administer effective rescue breaths. However, with children, the breath should be much gentler, and with infants, they should gentler still. So basically, the steps in doing this procedure is the same with the adult CPR. The only difference is the number of hands or fingers used in the chest compression. To begin, make sure that the scene is safe. Okay, so there are no signs of dangers or hazards, so we can proceed. So now we have to open the airway and check for breathing for up to 10 seconds using the look, listen, and feel method. Look at their position, complexion, and vital visual signs, and then get close and listen for airflow and breathing. And lastly, feel for a pulse which assures blood flow. So here we will be assessing if the patient are responsive or not. So we will also be turning the child or 
patient into his back and place him on a flat and hard surface. Okay, so there are no debris. We can now proceed. So now in assessing the open airway, our left hand at the head and right thumb at the chin to open the patient's mouth. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. And now I am going to assess the patient's pulse. So since this is an infant or pediatrics, I'm going to assess for the infant their brachial artery to avoid impeding the circulation in the carotid artery. And for children, um, I'm going to assess for the carotid artery. So in this um, video, I'll be assessing the infant's pulse rate. So I'll be assessing the brachial artery. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. Okay, so there is no normal breathing and no pulse felt. Now, if the client is not breathing, of course, we have to give two rescue breaths one to one and a half seconds each and remember we have to give two rescue breaths using the barrier device so this is an improvised one also we have to check the victims for signs of circulation so i will be checking the lips and the nail beds of the patient also we have to check the auto saturation and upon checking the child the child have 91% which is below normal. So upon checking also the lips and the nails, the patient is cyanotic, meaning there are no any signs of circulation. And if there are no any signs of circulation, we have to proceed doing the CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So my patient is an infant, assuming that this is an infant. So infants are within the age range of one month to one year old. So in order to deliver chest compression, we will have to find the correct compression by using the two fingers on the lower half of the breastbone, just below the nipples, or two thumb technique wherein we encircle the infant's chest with both hands and spread fingers around the thorax and place both thumb together over the lower half of the sternum and start compression. So I am going to use the two to three finger method. So now compress the chest quickly and rhythmically at a rate of at least um, 100 compressions per minute to 120 compressions in newborns and we will be continuing 5 cycles of compressions and 2 rescue breaths per cycle. So now starting or beginning compressions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Still, the patient is not responding, so I'm going to proceed to the third cycle of compression. We're assuming compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty.
Still, the infant is not breathing. So, we're going to proceed to the fifth cycle of compression. So, resuming compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. After one minute of CPR, pause and check the patient for signs of circulation. Look, listen, and feel again. So I'm going to check for the patient's breathing and pause again. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. As I can see in the lips, it is turning normal. The nail beds are also turning normal. The patient is slightly also slightly reacting so now we'll be putting the patient in the recovery position just like this slowly and gently and then we need to document the time the procedure started and the time of the recovery so now documenting is important because it communicates clinical information about the client including data related to their state of health and illness So if the patient is a child, so children are within the age group of 1 year old to 8 year old. So for the child, we have to pull one hand in correct position for chest compression. Since my right hand is my dominant hand, I will be using this one and then give 30 compression or 30 chest compressions in 1 to 1 and a half inches deep at a rate of 100 compressions per minute and we will be continuing five cycle of compression and two rescue breaths per cycle beginning compressions one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Still, the patient is unconscious. I'm going to proceed to the third cycle of compression resuming compressions 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 1 2 3 4 5 6 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Still, the patient is unconscious. I'm going to proceed to the fifth cycle of compression. Resuming compressions. 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, After one minute of CPR, pause and check the patient for signs of circulation look listen and feel again so i'm going to check for breathing and going to check for the carotid artery instead of the brachial artery 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 1007 1008 1009 1010 
As I can see, in the lips of the patient, it is turning normal. The nail beds are also turning normal. And the patient is slightly reacting. So now I will be putting the patient in a recovery position just like this. Gently and slowly. And then we need to document the time the procedure started and the time of recovery. So again, documentation is very important since it communicates clinical information about the patient, including data related to their state of health and illness. Newborn CPR is a life-saving procedure that is done when a baby's breathing or heart rate has stopped. Since this is a newborn, the first thing that we'll have to do is to evaluate the newborn's transition to extra uterine life using the upper score. So this is a quick test done at 1 minute and 5 minutes after birth. 1 minute will tell us how well the baby tolerated the, birth, the birthing process and the 5 minute will tell us how well the baby is doing outside the mother's womb. So for this return demonstration, let's say that the baby um, has an upper score of 3 which falls within the concerning range. So this means that the baby is in need for an immediate resuscitation. So after determining the baby's upper score, we will check the baby's responsiveness by tapping the shoulders, rubbing the soles, and calling out name loudly. Baby, baby, are you okay? Baby, baby, are you okay? So if the baby has no response, then position the newborn on his back and call for help to activate the code blue or doctor's quick so that the doctors and nurses could come over and help us to revive the baby. So next is we have to open the baby's airway. So we have to suction the baby's mouth and nose using a suction valve. So we'll have to remove the secretions if there are any that is obstructing the baby's airway. After that, we can also do the head tilt and chin lift to still open the baby's airway. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. Okay, since the baby did not respond to the stimulus that we did a while ago, we will have to perform the positive pressure ventilation using pediatric bug valve mass that is initiated if the patient is apneic or bradycardic. So now we are going to attach the BVM to the oxygen cylinder with 100% oxygen and then cover the entire mouth and nose of the infant with the BVM. So position the thumb and forefinger of one hand and then place it at the rim of the bag mask. This is to ensure pressure seal and then the remaining fingers will be placed on the jawline of the baby. So this is done so that our hand is not leaning on the patient's eyes and not compressing the baby's neck and is supporting the baby's head. Okay. So we will be delivering oxygen to the baby so be sure to maintain a proper pacing. So what we have going to do or what we are going to do is to Breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three. So PPV is done for at least 30 seconds of ventilation or 40 to 60 seconds breaths per minute. And always remember to look for the chest rise while each bagging or with each bagging. So after doing that, we have um, someone to attach the cardiac monitor and pulse oximeter. To the newborn to keep track of the baby's heart rhythm and pulse oximeter which measures the hemoglobin oxygen saturation which will help us monitor the efficacy of the CPR. So if there is no increase of heart rate or if it is still less 60 after 30 seconds of performing the PPV, we will have to proceed and perform chest compressions and rescue breaths. So how we are going to do that? So since this is a newborn, so we will be using two to three fingers or two thumb technique when doing compressions. So I'll be using the two to three finger method. So now, place compression fingers at the center of the chest, just below the nipple, and then press down approximately one-third the depth of the chest or about one and a half inches since the baby's bone is not strong enough to handle immense pressure and we don't want to harm the baby by um, fracturing the baby's rib cage.
So I'll start compressing from 1 to 10 and then up to 30. So beginning compression, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then after that, I'm going to be giving two rescue breaths. Now observe 3 is to 1 compressions to ventilation ratio, completing the 4 cycles in 2 man rescue work. So now I'm going to resume compressions. Okay, resuming compression. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Still, the baby is not responding and not proceeding to the third cycle of compression. Resuming compressions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Now evaluate the heart rate after four cycles. So now the newborn is breathing. So if still after the CPR, there's still no increase of heart rate or less than 60 beats per minute, we'll have to continue doing the CPR and prepare to assist for an intubation and giving of medicines. So this is where the doctor will um, insert a tube through the patient's mouth or nose down to the trachea to keep the trachea open and allow air to pass through. However, if the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute, we will be doing a post-resuscitative post care where we could refer to post-resuscitative care algorithm because we could find their procedures and tests that needs to be done to ensure that the baby is doing fine and the baby's body system is working. For instance, monitoring the administered oxygen concentration and the arterial oxygen saturation. So now, after doing the procedures, we'll have to document the time, the procedure, assessment, responses to the treatment, and medication given.